Tesla's battery day happened on Tuesday and it did not disappoint. Well, I guess some people disagree there, but Tesla demonstrated that they are thinking long-term and have clear paths to fix the main obstacles for consumers when buying electric cars and companies when making electric cars at scale. The main highlights of the announcements were that with their new battery technology, they will be able to achieve a 54% range increase for vehicles and a 56% reduction in dollars per kilowatt hour at the pack level. Basically, longer range, cheaper cars are on the way. But this event told us quite a bit about future products that people didn't really pick up on, and that's what we're gonna get into today. We're going to talk about what Battery Day told us about the Cybertruck, Roadster, Semi, and more, so let's get into it. At the Battery Day event, Tesla had the Roadster, Semi, Cybertruck, and ATV all on display because all of these, with the exception of the ATV as far as I believe, will rely heavily on the very technology for batteries that Tesla was announcing. For Tesla to produce the Semi, they need ultra high energy dense battery packs. The Semi is heavy, it will be towing a lot, and it needs to travel long distances, so simply adding more battery cells into the car doesn't do the trick. Similarly, for Tesla to achieve their 620 mile promised range in the Roadster, or their 500 plus mile range promised in the Cybertruck, the same technology will be necessary. Current battery packs cannot achieve these ranges without significant loss. In the Roadster, this will be no problem coming in at over $200,000, but the 500 plus mile range Cybertruck comes in at $69,990. Which brings us to the first thing that Battery Day revealed to us. Don't expect your Cybertruck in 2021. When Tesla unveiled the Cybertruck in November, they announced a release date of late 2021 with Tri-Motor coming in 2022. At the time, this made a lot of sense because the ranges for single and dual motor came in at 250 and 300 miles respectively. And if they're really going to hit 500 miles for the Tri-Motor version, that's a higher range than any production Tesla to date. Shortly after massive pre-orders started rolling in, they switched the order of these releases to be dual motor and tri-motor coming in late 2021 and single motor in 2022, possibly due to a massive amount of single motor orders or possibly just to push out the most profitable model first, which is what they do with all of their cars. For example, with the Model Y, they shipped the performance models first, then the all-wheel drive, and we're still waiting to hear about the rear-wheel drive. At Battery Day, during the Q&A, Elon confirmed that Tesla has over 600,000 pre-orders of the Cybertruck, and that's both insane and amazing. Now, of course, to order a Cybertruck is only $100, and it's refundable, so pre-order cancellations may be high. But even if you cut out a significant amount of those orders due to cancellations, it's still an extremely high number of trucks that Tesla needs to build. So let's get into how they're building this car. They're building a brand new factory in Austin, Texas. Typically, if you were to hear they have to build a factory to produce it, you would probably assume that takes at least a few years. But Tesla actually just built their Gigafactory Shanghai in 15 months from groundbreaking to production in 15 months, and Elon has said Giga Texas is moving even faster. I personally don't think it's gonna be faster since it's very likely to be their biggest factory, but we will see how it turns out, and I hope they prove me wrong. In any case, even once production starts, scaling production takes quite some time. At Tesla's Gigafactory Shanghai, they have an installed annual capacity of 200,000, meaning that at a maximum, they can produce 200,000 cars per year. They're installing more equipment to grow that capacity, but as expected, that all takes quite some time. The factory started production in December and by March was achieving a production rate of 3,000 cars per week. Now at Tesla's main factory in Fremont, they currently list an installed production capacity of 490,000 when you include all the cars produced there. And they're planning to ramp up to 500,000 Model 3s and Model Ys, bringing that total closer to 600,000 at the end of this year. So even if Giga or Terra Texas is successfully built and operational by the end of 2021, production capacity is going to start slow. On top of this, the Cybertruck is a completely new beast for Tesla. Up to this point, they've made the Model S and X, which definitely have some similarities, and then the Model 3 and Model Y, which are 75% the same, and still fairly similar to the Model S and X. The Cybertruck, however, basically looks nothing like any Tesla, or any car for that matter. It has the exoskeleton design, uses 300 series stainless steel, and uses Tesla's new armor glass, all of which is completely different than anything they've built. It's so different, in fact, that if, before this was announced, Tesla hadn't given us any clues about a truck, and this leaked, 
the only clue would probably have been the big center screen. Even then, I think people would have doubted that it was actually a Tesla. So this will be a brand new challenge for Tesla at a brand new factory, and production rates will likely start slow. Now I know, the Model Y was early by a lot, but that's completely different. That car is 75% the same as the Model 3, comes out of Tesla's main factory, and is immediately profitable. The Cybertruck is a different story, and we haven't even talked about the batteries yet. Tesla talked about three different cathode approaches to their new battery technology. Based on this slide from Battery Day, it looks like the Mega Pack, future $25,000 car, and Model 3 will be using iron. The Powerwall, Model S, Y, and X will be using nickel plus manganese, and the Cybertruck and Semi are in the same category using high nickel. They need this because they are heavy vehicles, sensitive to mass, and the energy density is incredibly important. So according to this slide, the Cybertruck will be made entirely with Tesla's new battery tech and will be high nickel. When talking about nickel, Elon said this. Um, I actually spoke with uh, the CEOs of the biggest mining companies in the world and said, uh, please make more nickel, it's very important. Um, and so the, I think they are gonna make more nickel. Uh, but uh, it, I, there's also, uh, you know, uh, I'm a little scared when he says, I think they're going to make more nickel because isn't nickel necessary for the Cybertruck, which needs to be produced in a year, and has over 600,000 pre-orders? On top of that, Elon was specific that it will take 12 to 18 months to actually realize these advantages in battery tech, and three years to fully realize them. Even saying that the dry electrode process is close to working, or that it does work with not a high yield. So I would not say this is like completely in the bag. It's still a lot of work to do. Additionally, the production line they have at Fremont is a pilot production line, and the real line won't be built until their Texas factory is built. It's all incredibly exciting stuff for the future, but if it is necessary for the Cybertruck, it doesn't look great for the timing of it coming in one year. They have to build a car factory, build a battery factory, finish work on their new cells, attain enough nickel, and then scale production of batteries and Cybertrucks, which again have 600,000 pre-orders. So even if a miracle happens and they're building the Cybertruck in a year, production ramping is going to take a while. And there's a very good chance you still won't get yours in 2021. So how long will it actually take for Giga Austin to produce 600,000 Cybertrucks? A few years? Now I know there will be cancellations, but just for fun, how long do you think it will take for Tesla to produce 600,000 Cybertrucks? Leave a comment below and let me know what you think. Real quick, if you're enjoying this video, make sure to subscribe to this channel for a lot more videos like this and about the Model Y, and make sure to hit that thumbs up. So what else did Battery Day tell us about Tesla's future products? Well, the most obvious one is that even though the Tesla Semi was supposed to enter limited production at the end of this year, last we heard, pretty sure that's gonna be delayed even further. It seems to me that Tesla knew this battery tech was on the horizon, but they got a little too excited announcing products that use it. And now they're on track to make all these products, just a bit behind schedule, which is nothing new. But moving on to the Roadster. Tesla unveiled the Roadster nearly three years ago on December 14th of 2017. It was a surprise at the end of the semi unveil event and they finished the presentation saying available in 2020. As we know, Elon has been clear that this isn't the company's top priority since it's an incredibly niche vehicle that starts at $200,000. He even talked about how the Roadster will now come after the Cybertruck. Clearly it won't be coming in 2020, but it will be interesting to see how long it is before it actually comes out. With the Cybertruck promised in late 2021 and probably arriving late as we discussed, we're probably looking at 2022 or even 2023 for the Roadster, which would be a significant amount of time between announcement and actual release. But on top of the Roadster needing Tesla's new battery tech to achieve a 620 mile range, the Roadster is going to need to improve performance thanks to the Plaid Model S revealed at battery day. The Plaid Model S gets a range of 520 plus miles, a zero to 60 under two seconds, and a top speed of 200 miles per hour. When comparing that to the Roadster, you're looking at 100 miles less range, a zero to 60 that is the same, and a top speed that is 50 miles per hour less for $60,000 less in the Plaid Model S. Aside from the cool design of the Roadster, for customers in that price point, that doesn't seem to be enough of a difference to spend $60,000 more on a sports car compared with a useful sedan. But of course, tons of people would buy it anyway. Elon has been pretty clear about this in the past, as well as Tesla's chief in design, saying that the 1.9 second Roadster is the base model and the production car will exceed the prototype in every way. 
but now they have to do this because of the Model S. It honestly feels like Tesla challenging themselves, but it will be interesting to see if these redesigns and updated specs contribute to the delay of the Roadster. But the other reason I think Tesla is waiting on the Roadster is because of the referral program. Tesla's current referral program works like this. If you buy a Tesla with my referral link in the description below, you can get a thousand free supercharger miles and I get a thousand free supercharger miles and I get entered into a drawing to win a Model Y or a Roadster. Although the evidence of them delivering these drawings is pretty slim. But the old referral program, which ended on February 2nd of 2019, includes a discount off the Founders Series Roadster with no deposit required. Whoever decided on this program probably got fired or at least had a good stern talking to because by the time the program ended, enough owners had racked up referrals that 60 people were getting free Roadsters and 20 of those people were getting two. So that's eight $250,000 Founders Series Roadsters that Tesla owes to customers and will receive no money in return for. Of course, each of these referrals meant a sale for Tesla, but most of them were Model 3s, and when calculating the cost difference between referrals and giving away a $250,000 car, it was starting to add up for Tesla, resulting in them ending the program. But man, I wish I could have gotten in on that program back then. In any case, the longer Tesla waits on these, the longer they delay the significant cost they'll have to incur when the Roadster is produced. Most likely, they'll sell the reservations first and then get around to the giveaways, but you know Tesla is not looking forward to that day, or those 80 days giving away $20 million worth of cars. So I do think Tesla is going to be late on all of these products because their battery tech has to be finalized, a factory has to be built, and they have to ramp up production of vehicles that are way different than what they've made before. But there is a possibility that the opposite is actually true. At Battery Day, Elon took to the mic multiple times to let us know that these battery promises aren't finalized and that they have a lot of work to do before they are fully realized. A year to 18 months to start realizing these, fully realize the advantages, probably it's about three years or thereabouts. Um, and there's still a lot of work to do. This isn't really typical Elon. Usually he overpromises, telling us something like how full self-driving will be achieved at a certain time. It doesn't happen and gets further delayed. So this could be Elon learning to not overpromise, but it also could be Elon purposely sandbagging and underpromising. We know Tesla has the pilot line producing these cells running at Fremont, and they are improving the equipment before it is implemented at their factories. But for the time being, they could be making tons of these cells, storing them, and getting ready for an on-time release of the Semi and Cybertruck. Last we heard, Elon said the Semi was entering limited production, and then now it looks like it needs these new cells. Maybe it's just delayed, or maybe it is ready to go, they have a few cells ready to go in limited volumes, and they don't want to destroy sales of their current cars. I mean, if they told us the price of batteries is dropping by half, the range is increasing by 56%, and it will be arriving in the Semi end of this year, you bet people would wait to buy a Model Y since it seems like if the Semi can get it, even if they aren't saying so, within a year or so, the Model Y could probably get a massive price drop and range increase. Tesla will do both of those things long term, but for the time being, they can't destroy sales because of the Osborne effect. Now that's just one theory and one explanation to Elon's cautious speaking at battery day, but I'm inclined to think he was just being careful and honest, and this battery tech will end up delaying the vehicles reliant upon it. Just to be clear though, if it arrives early, I'm celebrating because I'm really excited for the Cybertruck, and I actually haven't mentioned it here before, but I did pre-order a Cybertruck and I'm really excited to get that truck. I'm just not expecting it in 2021. But in the meantime, make sure you subscribe to this channel for lots more videos about Tesla and the Model Y. Make sure to like this video if you appreciated it. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Ryan Tech. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.